What's going on everyone? In today's episode, we're gonna talk all about high intensity spacing in practice, allowing you to grow more food in less space and looking at other crops than just lettuce when it comes to high intensity spacing. Let's go. So when it comes to high intensity spacing, a lot of you have learned about it through our lettuce planting videos. We talk about how we plant very densely and we don't grow for nice perfect heads, but we grow for leaves. Because when we do that, you're actually seeing this in practice here, how there's really no crowding. Now it might seem crowded, but the plants themselves are not crowding. There's nothing that's really overlapping. And in fact, when they touch, they kind of just meet and push up in the middle, allowing for nice neat rows in between. But those nice neat rows are mulched, not mulched with things like wood chips, like on our walkways, but mulched with foliage. And that does a few things. The first thing is it actually helps to hold moisture in the soil. Sunlight and wind help with evaporation. And the more your soil evaporates, the drier it gets and the more you have to water. So this will actually cut down on watering by up to 75% in our experience, but it also keeps the soil cooler, which is great. For things like lettuce, they don't like that hot sun. They don't like when the soil gets nice and warm, that sends them to seed, it makes them bolt. And so having them covered actually will help to keep the soil cooler up to 15 degrees in peak sun. So if it's 75 out, it's only like 60 degrees. And that's at soil level, that's awesome. So that's another benefit too, is it allows your plants to stay a little bit less stressed. And then the final thing is, I think one of the biggest benefits, that's less weeds. Come here, check it out. So if you come in here, check this out. So these, I'm gonna peel these leaves back here. And what you'll notice is there are no weeds. And that's the great thing is the fact that these, these rows here do have soil, they're bare soil, but there's no weeds growing in that bare soil because they've been completely smothered. And having that, that soil not exposed allows you to not have to do as much weeding, which I think actually takes up a lot of your time as a gardener. And we're still getting beautiful, beautiful lettuce through what we call cut and come again. That's where we take a knife, we slice off just the top of the plant, leaving the bottom three to four inches or so, and it just keeps regrowing. And so we've harvested from all this lettuce here, and it just keeps coming back, which is awesome. But the fact that they're growing closely together has all those amazing benefits. And you can do it with more than just lettuce. And that's what this whole episode is all about. So this right here is an example of tomatoes planted high intensity. Now we've intercropped with some basil in the center, but the whole idea is the fact that, believe it or not, these are a determinate Roma. So we're not pruning these up a stake. That's why we don't have them trellised. We're just letting these kind of bush out. And eventually we might put them in a cage, but either way, they're growing so closely together that the leaves are basically just touching, allowing for that shaded soil underneath, which helps to suppress weeds, hold on to moisture, and keep the soil cooler, which when it comes to tomatoes, they actually like that. Tomatoes, believe it or not, will fruit better in a range of about 70 to 75 degrees, and not so much in 85 to 90 degrees. So during midsummer, when all your tomatoes are ripening, you could actually have future fruit production if you kept your plants healthy. Oftentimes they'll just drop the blossoms, and it also can contribute to something like blossom end rot, which is usually contributed to a lack of calcium, but often it's not the lack of calcium that causes it, it's the lack of water because calcium can only be uptake through water. So if your soil goes dry, you're not gonna get the calcium. So having the soil protected with all this foliage is gonna help keep it cooler, which equals more flowers, and the flowers will stay on the plant and not be dropped through blossom end rot through more soil moisture. It goes hand in hand, but check it out. This is another example that most people wouldn't consider tomatoes a crop that they would plant high intensity. Most people would only get about two plants in the same space, one here and one here, and there'd be a bunch of open space in the middle. But because we crowded them a little bit closer together, we've got this third plant here, allowing for three plants in the same space. So that was tomatoes, but check it out. This is one of my favorite ones. This is a great intercropping that has, we actually talked about this in our intercropping video. It actually has a rhubarb plant in the center. Beautiful, huge rhubarb plant. But on the sides, it's got peppers. Now these peppers here are gonna get nice and large. So they're not fully grown yet, allowing for some open space. But what you'll see is in the open space, we got some weeds I gotta pull out. That's why we want to have this soil covered as much as possible. But check it out, look at these beets. These beets right here are doing the exact same thing. This rhubarb is growing out it's shading all the soil around, not allowing for weeds to grow, protecting the soil. But then these beets are multi-sown. Three beet plants per space there. And those three plants are going, to, are going to grow out. And all that foliage is touching, just like our lettuce did, protecting the soil and allowing us to have huge production in a small space. So yeah, definitely open space, not great. We planted some radishes in this open space here 
and we since have harvested from them because those are just a really quick turnaround crop. But in the meantime, we have that open soil and you can see shaded soil, great. Open soil, not great. Nothing's growing there, but also things like weeds and the sun and the wind can take advantage of that open space. And this, this is probably one of my all time favorite beds, at least this year. This is our cabbage bed. Now our cabbage bed, we talked about how we are going to be growing about twice as much cabbage in the same amount of space through high intensity spacing. What you'll notice is that you can't even see soil. There is no space in this whole bed where you can see any soil. I'm geeked about it. I am absolutely pumped about it. If there is anything that gets me super excited, it is just a bed that is chock full of plants. And this bed right here has 12 cabbage plants, 12 cabbage plants in the same amount of space as you typically would have six. And what you'll notice here is that, check this out. If you come in close, this is such an amazing example of what I'm talking about. You have a head here and you have a head here. But what is happening in the middle? Look at this, see these leaves? It's like two hands. It's like a, like a kind of a clam shell, look at that. You open it up, bare soil. Can you see that? Look at that bare soil right there, bare soil. But those leaves, they're not crowding each other, right? They're not growing up and smashing on top of each other. They're growing together, right? They're growing, smashing in, but then growing up, allowing for us to space our plants closer together and getting way more yield. Like I said, most people would put about two cabbage in this area right here, but we have four. And that is awesome because not only is that more production, but it also allows us to cover the soil better. So I am pumped about this. This is easily one of my favorites. And another thing you'll notice from this, great takeaway, very little pest pressure. There's a few bug holes here. There's a couple over here. But what you'll notice, very little, if any, insect pressure. And that's because the plants are healthy. How can you tell they're healthy? Check it out. So if you notice here, these leaves have a really squeaky, waxy, coating to them, that is actually known as a biofilm. It protects them from things like hungry caterpillars and other pests. And so the more of that you have, the more they're gonna be protected. And if your plants were stressed, they would not produce a biofilm, indicating to me that not only are they not stressed, but they're in fact the opposite. They're thriving in this environment. And then we have potatoes. Now potatoes are really easy to high intensity space. Obviously you can do them in containers, you can do them in raised beds, you can do them in ground. But a lot of people make the mistake of planting a few rows of potatoes and then having a ton of empty space that they will plant some other type of crop. I've always liked to plant out an entire space with potatoes because what it allows me to do is it allows me to put my rows only about a foot to maybe a foot and a quarter apart allowing for really close spacing, which because we're growing tubers, the leaves don't really matter. They're kind of just growing into each other. And when they grow into each other, they create all of this dense foliage. And what does that do? Well, if you've ever hilled your potatoes, you're hilling your potatoes not for more fruit production or tuber development. You're, you're hilling your potatoes to protect your potatoes from sunlight. So the great thing is the fact that high intensity spacing creates that shade, which suppresses weeds, helps hold moisture in the soil, helps keep it cooler, but it's the same exact shade that's going to help to actually keep your potatoes from turning green. And that is awesome. That's why when you have a nice full bed of potatoes like this, you're gonna have some benefit from high intensity spacing. Not only are you gonna get more production, but you're also going to have a better yield and a better quality yield at that. So really happy with these. And over here, here's another example of some brassicas being planted in close proximity. We have our kale here, three kale plants. Then we have our broccoli. We have an early broccoli, and then we have a later Calabrese broccoli. This is a Waltham broccoli. And then this is the Calabrese broccoli, which is a little bit later. So they're not, they're just starting to put heads on. They look awesome. And then over here we have our kohlrabi. And what you'll notice is that they're all brassicas, but because the leaves are kind of all same leaf type, kale and broccoli all look very similar. Even the, even the kohlrabi has very similar leaves. It's not like cabbage that would kind of interfere and have some problems. We're growing them closely together. And what's happening is those leaves smashing and growing straight up to the sky, allowing for us to grow so much more food in such a small space, which I love. Last but not least, here's another final example here of some high intensity spacing. We've got here a row of some cucumbers. These cucumbers are eventually gonna grow up a trellis, which we're gonna make. But then in between, we have all these onions. Now we only space out our onions about four inches apart. And that allows for us to grow tons of onions in the same amount of space that you typically would have. In this space here, we have about 100 onions. You typically would only plant about 30 to 40 onions 
given similar spacing. All right, now that you've seen all those amazing examples, I wanna go through a couple rules that are gonna give you success because a lot of people just assume if you take plants and throw them closer together, you'll be fine. You couldn't be further from the truth. It's not gonna be fine because you're gonna have things like competition for sunlight, competition for soil space, competition for nutrients. And so what you need to do is you need to follow these rules. They're really simple. First thing, nutrients. You wanna make sure that you're adding excess nutrients to make sure that if you're growing more food in less space, you're accounting for that. So if we would fertilize, let's say a quarter cup, well, we're growing twice as many plants, so now we're gonna use a half cup. We're actually upping the amount of fertilizer to account for those extra plants. We also amend the soil every single year with fresh compost, rock dust, worm castings, make sure to really get that life and the flora fauna, the nutrients, the fertility, all that just boosted to maximum levels because that way we can grow more food in less space without the competition. Second thing is make sure you're planting stuff that is going to grow well together like we talked about. These different examples, they all go very well together because they kind of coexist peacefully. If you don't know what I'm talking about we just did a video on intercropping and why we intercrop and how to intercrop for success and in that video we talked about not planting tall plants next to small plants or big leafed plants next to small plants things that don't really grow well together that aren't great planted next to each other shouldn't be planted next to each other with high intensity spacing because you're going to end up with problems and you're going to end up with overcrowding and then the third and final rule is make sure you weed prior to the plants growing you see in all these examples that i've shown all of them, we had to weed in the beginning because what that allows you to do is it allows you to reduce that weed pressure where they would the weeds would be competing for soil space, the weeds would be competing for sunlight and things like that. If you weed temporarily until your plants have grown up and have kind of just started touching, then that is when you can really take your hands off. We wrote about this in our book, The Autopilot Garden. As soon as your leaves are touching, that's where things go autopilot. And that's where the work basically stops and the enjoyment begins. Because once our leaves are touching and the soil has been mulched with the foliage, you're all good. So those are three simple rules and some great examples on how to high intensity space. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you all learned something new. If you did, make sure to hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, this is Luke from the MI Gardener channel reminding you to grow bigger. Take care. Bye. Hey, thank you so much for watching today's video. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed, consider checking this one out. You'll probably enjoy it just as much. I wanna thank you so much for your viewership because without it, this channel would not be as amazing as it is. If you haven't subscribed yet, it's free. Consider doing that. We upload every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, rain or shine. And if you need any garden tools, supplies, or seeds, check out mygardener.com. We got you covered. See you guys in the garden. Bye.